Praise the Orc Chapter 58. Quants 1. Croctus stood before a gate. This was Quants, the city of the gnomes. Perhaps that was why both the city and entrance seemed small. The gate was firmly closed. Croctor knocked on the gate and waited for the gatekeeper to show up. However, no one showed up. The door remained firmly closed. Croctor folded his arms. It seemed like there was a ban on foreigners today. The moment that Croctor was thinking about yelling, the ground started to shake. Something huge was running this way. Croctor turned around, his eyes widening in shock. From far away, huge monsters were leaping off the ground. Ogres. They were several times larger and much burlier than orcs. Their intelligence was low, but they acted on their instincts, and were one of the worst monsters that attacked others randomly, chewing them alive. The ogres looked at Croctor and drooled, saw like teeth flashing in their mouths. The flesh and blood of various unknown animals were stuck to them. Croctor tried to flee, but they had already found him and rushed towards him. Kuaea. The ogre wielded a huge wooden stick that Croctor quickly dodged. The wind whistled in Croctor's ears as the stick forcefully sliced through the air. A chill went down his spine. This was the ogre's power. He heard the stories, but this was the first time he heard it directly. Damn, Bultar. However, he was an orc, a fierce warrior. In addition, his weapon was Ogre Slayer, a great sword crafted by the Golden Anvil clan. Maybe he had finally met the right enemies. Croctor carefully moved his great sword. However, there wasn't just one ogre, but many more. Five other ogres soon began to approach Croctor. It was an emergency if even one ogre appeared at a city. Croctor fell back against the city wall. This. He had forgotten about his rear. As Croctor's eyes widened, the ogres seemed to be smiling at him. Croctor scrambled to raise his great sword and prepared for the worst. He vowed to kill at least one. Bam bam bur bam bur ba bam 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 am. Suddenly, trumpets sounded from above Croctor's head and a loud voice could heard from behind him. Quant's gnome garrison. Asura thousand wave artillery, load. Asura thousand wave artillery, complete. Croctor looked up at the sound. At the edge of the wall, cannons were sticking out. The childish voices continued to shout, turn off the safety device. Off. Aim towards the target. Aimed. These guys. Let them know the cost of attacking out city. Launch. Launch. Lights flashed above Croctor's head and there was the sound of something exploding as the lights flew towards the ogres. Red, blue, and other variously colored lights hit the ogres' bodies. Woo oh oh. Eong. The ogres struck by the energy gun stayed still for a moment before falling over. The gnomes didn't stop their attacks as a baptism of magic power followed. The ogres crouched and covered their heads. The gnomes' attacks struck the ogres without rest. It wasn't a physical attack but a magical bombardment of magic bullets made by using the extensive magic engineering skills of the gnomes. Then, the attack stopped. He could hear a fuss occurring on the walls. Awara, charge faster, charge faster. There isn't enough magic power dot. The getting up. Why are the supplies coming so late? Stay calm. The ogres crouching on the ground noticed the pause in bombardment and got up and started to roar. Kuaea. Kuaeaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
E -e 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 -eng. The ogre fell from the wall. The gnomes hunting the ogres discovered Proctor's presence. What? The gnomes saw an orc swinging a great sword at the ogres outside the wall. An orc. Orcs weren't often seen in quants. Furthermore, it was the first time they had ever seen an orc fight against an ogre alone. The ogre backed away every time the orc's sword flashed. Dazzling swordsmanship. Captain Teo shouted at the garrison soldiers who were staring blankly, everybody move quickly. It's impossible for an orc alone. Yep. This will give us enough time. Dot. The gnomes on the wall hurriedly charged their magic power. Captain Teo looked down with sober eyes. Out of the five ogres, the orc was completely marking one. The rest of them were attacking the gate, or climbing up the other walls. Um. It was dangerous. In particular, the gate was on the verge of crumbling. At that moment. Bultar rr. The orc escaped from the ogre he was attacking and ran towards the one striking the gate. He swung the great sword at one of the ogre's legs. Kyo o orc. The ogre staggered and turned a pair of furious eyes towards the orc. The orc shouted, Come. Don't run or hide. Uo o o o. Kuo o o o. Two ogres rushed towards the orc. The orc started running away after receiving their attention. His movements were swift but there was a limit. The ogre's stick hit the orc's great sword. Ugh. The orc blocked it with his great sword, but his body flew through the air from the impact. He soon landed and rolled on the ground. The ogre's stick aimed towards the orc again, who rolled to avoid it. Teo started sweating as he watched the battle. The orc continued to attack the ogres with dangerous movements. Without the orc, the ogres would have climbed up the walls and killed the gnomes by now. A great warrior. Captain Teo shouted, ready. Yep, it is ready. The preparations are complete. The Quant's gnomes soldiers replied. Teo also inserted magic power into the rifle on his shoulders. His weapon, the magic rifle, general, was an ancient legacy that was classified as an artifact. Teo aimed for an ogre's head. Save the orc. Power aim. Aim. Launch. Before long, the colorful magic power of the gnomes sparked again. The red and blue magic bullets hit the ogres, who lost their balance and fell to the ground. Uo o o o. Crocter looked up. A small gnome holding a rifle was staring at him from the wall. He pointed at the ogre and lifted his thumb and then turned it upside down. It was an obvious signal. Crocter nodded and firmly grasped his great sword, Ogre Slayer. The ogres were still curled up as magic bullets continued to fall onto their bodies. It was time to end them once and for all. There was no need to give them a good send-off to the afterlife. At a glance, life and death seemed to be quite distant. It was the fate of a swordsman to connect the two ends that seemed to be far away from each other. The Ogre Slayer broke the neck of the defenseless ogres. Two ogres died in quick succession. The rest of the group was still attached to the walls. Their expressions changed as they saw that the situation was suddenly changing. The ogres' disgusting faces seemed more demon-like. They revealed their saw blade-like teeth and roared, Kuaea. Kuaear. They launched themselves off the wall and rushed towards Crocter. They were fools. Bultar. Crocter raised his great sword. Running away from the walls just made them better targets for the gnome's magic power. The magic power of the gnomes poured towards the backs of the ogres, who were hit by the magic power. They rolled to the ground upon impact. The destructive power wasn't enough to kill them, but the gnomes' Asura Thousand Wave artillery caused each ogre tremendous suffering. Then Crocter's great sword, the Ogre Slayer, killed them. Even the fearful ogres of Elder Lord couldn't beat this combination. Crocter sliced them one by one. The ogres suffered from bloodshot eyes and breathed their last breath. Crocter turned his head. The gnomes holding rifles and dressed in soldier uniforms were staring at Crocter. Bam bam ba bam ba ba bam bam bam. The sound of the trumpet rang out again, like a signal marking the start of the battle. At that moment, a gnome with a long rifle saluted towards Crocter. It was the best honor for friends who fought together. 
Following him, the other Quant soldiers also saluted Proctor. Proctor felt an unknown feeling inside as he was saluted by the small gnomes on the wall. He was a soldier who often crossed the line, but he didn't receive salutations often. People were too afraid of him to pay tribute to him. He wasn't a soldier guarding the border, but one who broke through the border in order to kill people. This was a strange feeling. Proctor faced them and saluted. Bam bam bur bam bur ba bam bam bam. The trumpet of victory sounded again. The eye contact between warriors. It was the first meeting of Captain Tio of the Quant's Gnomes Garrison and the Orc warrior Proctor. What did you come here for? Captain Tio asked in a loud voice. He had a childlike quality to his voice, but the force behind it was like a general's voice during a wartime rally. They were sitting in front of the entrance management office, located across from Quanta, Gate. Proctor replied, I came to get help before heading north. Captain Tio frowned. The north was the dangerous area where the group of ogres that almost defeated them today came from, and the place where many other scary things dwelled. Well, it doesn't really matter. You have your circumstances. But Quance isn't accepting outsiders for a while. Dot. Why not? Proctor knew that Quance was a city of gnomes, but it wasn't a place with limited access like Arnon. These days, many creatures are pouring from the north. Dot. Not just the ogres, but doppelgangers and the evil lich. Dot. They have blocked access to outsiders due to the doppelganger. Dot. Um. The doppelganger is still somewhere here. Dot. Proctor understood the situation. However, this made it difficult for him. Tio said, but I can believe in you. Dot. You are a fellow who defeated the ogres along with us. I will guarantee your identity and send you in. Yes. Proctor nodded. He reached out. Thank you. Bah. Don't say it like that. Dot. Tio waved his hands as if he was embarrassed. The gnome's words and behavior were completely different from each other. Gnomes were the size of a child. If the dwarves gave off a small and reliable impression, the gnomes were cute like small humans. However, they excelled in magician engineering, and were the best in the field of magic, enchanting, and engineering. Despite being a great alternative to the elves, they were the next least popular species after the orcs. Good dot. What is your name? Where are you from? Tio asked since he was acting as the entrance attendant. My name is Croctor. I became a warrior at Orcrox Fortress, and am currently heading to the north. Tio's eyes widened. Croctor. Honorable Orc Croctor. Croctor's shoulders went up. Hum hum, some people call me that. Cool cool cool. Oh, glorious. Tio stood up excitedly before sitting down again. His response made it seem like he was trying not to lose his dignity. Who, hum hum, in any case, you use a big sword, and have tattoos all over your body, so you fit the description of Croctor. The bravery you showed today also fits with Croctor. Dot. Welcome to Quants. Dot. Thus, Croctor was allowed access to Quants. But you should be careful. Right now, the public sentiment in Quants isn't good. Dot. Recently, a doppelganger has committed a series of murders. In particular, you are a scary orc so. It's okay. Did you say you came to Quants before going to the north? Croctor nodded. The north. There are students studying the north, so it would be good if you visited the academy. Tio said. His tone was grim and sober, but he had a child's voice, so Croctor couldn't help smiling. Tio noticed and frowned. An oversized orc shouldn't ignore gnomes. Dot. Gnomes are very clever, wise, and powerful. Dot. I know. Your magic power is really great. Him him. It is natural. We are proud of our gnomes. Dot. Key kick. Tio was in a good mood and laughed loudly. Croctor, I will authorize your access. Thank you, Tio. He left the administration office with Tio. The city of the gnomes was small and charming, but everything was organized. Unlike other cities, the streets were blocked and arranged regularly in a modern configuration. Hum hum. Croctor. When I saw your salute before, your posture was quite excellent. Dot. Do you have any military experience? Croctor laughed. 
I once served. Ho. I see. You were a soldier. Tio's eyes lit up. I have agreed to drink with the squad members who defeated the ogres. Crocter contributed as well, so you should go with me. Alcohol. No man could refuse. Thus, Crocter wandered the streets with the gnome Captain Tio.